Hi, my name is Eric Pierce, editor of the Downey Patriot newspaper, and I'm here today with Mario Guerra, two-time former mayor of this great city of Downey, and this is Talking Downey with Mario and Eric. Our topic today, we're talking uh, some local Downey news. Uh, last week, uh, city council elected a new mayor pro tem, Mario. Yes! Crazy! Crazy. And uh, somebody that we didn't expect, uh, Catherine Alvarez, District, District 3 Council Member, uh, on a, uh, what was it, a 2-1 two, a two vote? or 3-1-1. Three, 3-1-1. One, one. Three, one, one. Let, me, let me repeat what I said earlier. Crazy! Okay. Crazy. I, yeah, I know. Yeah. I didn't expect it. Uh, many people didn't expect it. I think most people didn't expect it. I think it's crazy it's yeah. just absolutely the craziest thing i've ever heard so what <laughs> happened for those who don't know what happened what happened to council meeting so uh sean ashton resigned last meeting and he was mayor pro tem so he they needed to fill the seat okay and the city charter does say you need a mayor the city council should appoint a mayor shall which means a definitive shall appoint a mayor and a mayor pro tem it doesn't say when how or whatever okay, okay? so they had it up the reorganization on March the 8th council meeting. So Sean Ashton uh, uh, abstained. He mm -hmm. was still there in the council. Claudia Fermetta uh, nominated herself. It was seconded by Blanca Pacheco, Mayor Blanca Pacheco. So there was some discussion, but you had a motion in a second. Uh, Catherine Alvarez brought up it should be her. Um, I want to note that uh, Mario Trujillo was nominated both by uh, Sean and Blanca and Catherine, everybody nominated Mario Trujillo and he turned it down. I think he wants to be mayor in a couple of he years. He doesn't want to be mayor pro tem. He doesn't want to be mayor pro tem, which is kind of sad because he could have been mayor pro tem for the rest of this year and all of next year mm -hmm. and then mayor a year. So he could have been mayor pro tem for 16 months. Mm -hmm. So Catherine wanted to be mayor then, mayor pro tem. Uh, but you had a motion in a second, okay? So you had to act on that motion. So Claudia Fermena and Blanca Pacheco uh, they both voted in favor of making Claudia Fermena the mayor pro tem. Mm -hmm. uh, Sean Ashton abstained, and Mario Trujillo and Catherine Alves voted against. Right. So, 2-2 two, two tie, which mm -hmm. means nobody wins. No go. No go. So then Catherine nominates herself, and Mario Trujillo seconded. So now there's a motion, mm -hmm. okay, to make Catherine Alvarez the mayor pro tem. Sean Ashton abstains, so that's the one over here. Claudia Fermena voted no. Mario Trujillo and Catherine voted yes, and Mayor Blanca voted yes. Three, one, one. So, so uh, Blanca Pacheco uh, votes to to make Catherine Alvarez Mayor Pro Tem. I think that's the vote that surprised so many people. And, and I think what's controversial about Catherine Alvarez uh, being Mayor Pro Tem is that she, she's the subject of a recall right now. And so, so her seat right now is, is a little unstable. It's, it's up in the air. Sure. And there was a lot of surprise that, that Mayor Pacheco uh, made, uh, voted in favor of Captain Alvarez being Mayor pro tem. Uh, did Blanca give a reasoning behind her vote? The reasoning that I think she told everybody publicly was that the city attorney said you need to have a Mayor pro tem. So I think she felt that she was uh, voting to to fulfill that obligation, mm -hmm. but obviously you don't have to vote for that, and it would have been a 2-2 two -two tie, you kept mm -hmm. going on, and right. you know, and telling her, you didn't need to appoint a mayor pro tem at this meeting, or for that matter, the rest of this mm -hmm. entire year. So I think that was a little bit of a surprise, but I felt in her heart that she thought that, mm -hmm. you know, that she was moving the city forward. Right, interesting. Um, well, there's obviously gonna be a fallout, and, and there's been a lot of criticism uh, leveled against uh, Blanca Pacheco. Uh, letters to the editor and the editor in the Downey Patriot last week were very critical. Um, a lot of wondering of, you know, why why she voted the way that she did. Um, but it is what it is. And so we, we have a mayor pro tem in, in, the city, in the city of Downey. What are the repercussions now? What do you think, what do you think happens? Well, first of all, let me go back to, this is crazy, okay? Mm -hmm. This is crazy and I can't believe that this is, Downey was spiraling and now this puts it in even worse free flow. Just for the listeners to remember, Catherine Alvarez uh, 
protested outside the council members' homes mm -hmm. right before she got elected with bullhorns at 11 o'clock at night, uh, waking up the families, the neighborhood. They had to pass an ordinance even uh, for that, including to Blanca Pacheco mm -hmm. and to Claudia Fermenta, Rick Rodriguez, Alex Saab, to all their homes. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. And she still to this day justifies it somehow. So I understand in second, third, and fourth chances, but you have to have some remorse. So that's part of it. The, the reason for the recall is, you gotta remember, she was, uh, she had felony uh, uh, welfare fraud charges against her for mm -hmm. defrauding the welfare system on her. Uh, it got pled down on there, mm -hmm. but she has a, fel she has, excuse me, not a felony conviction, she has a welfare fraud conviction. Mm -hmm. She's permanently banned from Michaels for shoplifting, okay, so it's pretty hard when you get arrested by the Downey Police Department a couple of times when, you know, uh, when, when you're supposed to help oversee mm -hmm. them. And then she did have two warrants for her arrest for not showing up to court. So this is the opposite of character counts in our city. So her background, and I don't care anything before that, her criminal background, to me, makes her unqualified to not only be on the city council, but especially for Mayor Pro Tem. When Blanca Pacheco as mayor can't fulfill the duties, and I understand Mayor Pro Tem is largely ceremonial, mm -hmm. but she is the voice and the face of our city, mm -hmm. and the first time in our city we've ever had a criminal in that position. Mm -hmm. um, and again, like you said, subject to a recall. So right. it's crazy. This is just nutty. I'm embarrassed for the city of Downey for the first time in my life. I'm really embarrassed. Mm -hmm. You know, that's been the, the bulk of the criticism that I've heard is, you know, what kind of example is it to the kids in Downey that our mayor pro tem has a lengthy criminal record, uh, never before in the city of Downey, and it, it, it kind of blows my mind. And, you know, Mayor Pacheco, she's campaigning for assembly, so it could be expected that she, she might be out of the city for, for certain times, and that's when the mayor pro tem steps in and, and runs a meeting. Uh, so, so we're gonna see. We're gonna see how that goes. You want to know about the consequences. So, yeah. some of the consequences are. So, we're looking for a new city manager. Okay, our fine city manager Gilbert Levis, uh, you know, resigned and is leaving us in the middle of the year. Um, so, the question I always ask is, what worthy candidate out there is going to be willing to come in when you have a dysfunctional? situation there that you have three seats that are up in the air mm -hmm. because most city managers or if you're on a school district you a super applying someplace superintendent mm -hmm. you wouldn't take a job unless it was a 500 mm -hmm. because obviously you're then you'd be one election away from possibly being terminated or changing the direction so in our city you have potentially three seats that are mm -hmm. open right now well not potentially you you're very very mm -hmm. easily to do that so for the remainder of the year after june and july you know who's going to run the city right um and then so there's a lot of consequences on the quality of people the, the, the quality future. of the candidates are going to why would anybody want to be city manager in downey right now the city the city council is fractured uh you know last week a uh, council member from meta posted on facebook about uh, about the vote she used the word disgrace and she used the word corrupt to describe the city of Downey. Taking uh, that into consideration, what kind of candidate, who, who, who's going to want to come into this city right now? It, it, it is terrible. That's going to be the difficult situation. Mm -hmm. And I think we need leadership on the council. I think we need to, to uh, grab this and, and work together. They need to work together, and they can. I mean, there's good people there uh, that have a good heart and downy on there. I think they just need to get together, and it's fractured. And no, the Catherine Alvarez, that'll never uh, be something that will be acceptable mm -hmm. by our, our residents or even by some members of the city council, and rightfully so. But the rest of them have potential. I know have love their city. I know three of them really well. Uh, and Councilman Trujillo and uh, uh, Frometa, Councilwoman Frometa and Mayor Blanca. And I do believe that they have the best interests of the city at heart. I just think they need to come together. I, I, uh, I, I agree. I think they do, but I think they also have their own personal agendas. And I think they're putting the, their personal agendas over the needs and the best interests of the city of Downey. That's my honest opinion. I think that's why they're not working well together. And it's really too bad. And it's such a critical juncture for the city of Downey. And it, it, Eric, we always known we were one election away 
and we kept calling it, they're circling the wagon, but we can't believe that this was the la this last election mm -hmm. that caused this much turmoil, you know? Uh, you know, when, when we lost uh, Alex Rodriguez, uh, excuse me, Alex Saab and Rick Rodriguez, uh, and then unfortunately, the unfortunate turn of events that Catherine Alvarez got elected. So there's a lot of special interest in there. We've seen her with several special interests mm -hmm. on there, from the marijuana lobbyist on there too, uh, a couple other different lobbyists, and I think she's willing. The, the corrupt part, I could see her looking at that. She has several lawsuits um, and so forth. So I can see that that scare in the residents. I've been told, my neighbors told me that uh, their daughter said, you have to move out of the city of Downey. I said, well, wait a second, you know, we still are the city of Downey. We have a fine police department, a fine school district, a fine fire department, and, you know, we're still a city that people can look up to. Mm -hmm. I think right now uh, the top is a little bit dysfunctional. Right. No, that's a great point. I think residents still are involved and Downey residents care and they're not just laying back and letting anything happen. They're actually finally getting getting involved. Uh, you know, we, we talked a little bit about the recall. Uh, what's the latest in the recall? So what I heard is that they actually uh, went through it all and then instead of 35, it was down to like 23 signatures uh, out of 4,000. So mm -hmm. they were 23 signatures short, uh, which again, it made a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. People want to do that on there. So uh, recall 2.0 is coming up. I think the residents are very fired up. Mm -hmm. I think they, they now have a lead base of all those signatures. I think they'll go after them and then all you need is, you know, 22 more, but they're gonna go yeah. out and get another 500 to 1,000 more to mm -hmm. make sure. The timeline could happen that the election would happen in September, October of this year. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important. So to me, I'm cheering them on because this is the only opportunity you have to maybe, I, I can't imagine her becoming mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, that just, that would just be a slap in the face to all the residents. Again, I, you know, when people that says, oh, everybody uh, serve their time and they serve a second chance, they do. But you, again, you have to have some remorse. She has no remorse for that. I heard her on a podcast about a month ago. Actually, I didn't. Somebody told me about it. And I went back and listened to that little snippet. Mm -hmm. So when she was arrested at Michael's, right, she was outside and she says this on the podcast. I was outside and yes, I had stolen and I had all these things in my pockets and so forth. Security guard came out to get me. And the security guard wanted me to come inside. And I said, no, you're going to call the police. And he goes, no, if you come inside, I won't call the police. So she goes inside. And, of course, the security guard called the police, mm -hmm. right? Because that's the right thing he did. Right. He escalate the situation. So she was mad that the police, the security guard, tricked her into coming back in. Not that she was caught shoplifting, and this was a baby formula. Mm -hmm. This is Michael's arts and crafts, okay, right. stealing stuff. But she was angry at that, that the security guard turned. So again, you need to have remorse in your heart to be able to go forward. She has no, no remorse against welfare fraud, no remorse for that, no remorse. And she actually doubled down a few months ago at the council meeting about protesting in front of their houses. And nothing, nothing came up. They couldn't do that. Right. They couldn't do what she wanted. And it's still, you know. Yeah. So. And, but, but, you know, to, to be clear, the reason that, that she's being recalled or there's an attempt attempt to recall her is that voters didn't know about her criminal history correct when they voted when they voted right. that's where it really comes right. down to. right and i think that's what they're doing now they're yeah. making sure they say look if voters if you want to do vote for her on there then at least you have the opportunity you have the opportunity but now you're fully informed so i think that election will happen and they'll happen in the fall because they're fired up i talked to the proponents of the recall and they're ready they're yeah. organized they fell 22 votes short our yeah. signature short, which is crazy for all the work they put in. Yeah, absolutely. So. Well, thank you guys for watching. This is a very quick episode that we wanted to film. Uh, we want to keep it uh, uh, lively and, and on topic. And uh, we're curious to hear your uh, your thoughts on our new mayor pro tem and the direction of the, the direction of the city. Leave a comment. Send us an email, talking down at gmail .com or us on Facebook. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you, Mario. I appreciate it. It's always great to be here with you. Send us your information. We'll pass it on to the city council and let them know your thoughts. So thanks for being with us. Thank you.